Ghana has become the first country to receive COVID-19 vaccines from the global COVAX scheme. The scheme, which is led by Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, the World Health Organization and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, works to make sure vaccines are distributed fairly around the world. Ghana's vaccines are part of an initial batch of deliveries bound for several low- and middle-income countries. Ivory Coast received another batch on Friday. I'd like to encourage the healthcare workers in Africa, some of whom are raising questions about safety. Uh, the vaccines have been thoroughly looked at. The data is sufficient in terms of safety. Please accept this vaccine. The governments have prioritized you for a good reason. Hopes are high that the inoculations will allow the world to finally emerge from a pandemic that has killed more than 2.4 million people, infected 112 million and hammered the global economy. But experts warn that unless the whole world has access to vaccines, the pandemic will not end. The COVAX scheme aims to deliver at least 2 billion doses globally by the end of this year. More than 217 million vaccine doses have been administered globally, though the vast majority have been given in high-income countries. Sticking with vaccinations now, Guinea started inoculation for the Ebola virus after declaring a fresh epidemic in what is the first outbreak in four years. The country detected new cases on February 13th in the southeastern Nzerikore region, which was the epicentre of the previous epidemic. Here, we vaccinate contacts first. Since the virus was discovered in this hospital, we're now vaccinating contacts first. And in the second stage, we're going to extend the vaccination to all the hospital staff since they are on the front line in the fight against this disease. The re-emergence of the viral disease has evoked the spectres of the devastating Ebola epidemic between 2013 and 2016 in West Africa, which left 11,300 people dead in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. Ebola causes severe fever and, in worst cases, unstoppable bleeding. It's transmitted through close contact with bodily fluids. People who live with or care for patients are most at risk. Italy's ambassador to the Democratic Republic of Congo was among three people killed in an attack in the east of the country. Luca Atanasio was shot dead after unidentified assailants ambushed a two-vehicle convoy from the UN's World Food Programme in which he was travelling. The group was en route to a school programme in the eastern province of North Kivu, near the Rwanda border. The diplomat's Italian bodyguard and a Congolese driver were also shot. Six other people survived the attack. Authorities in DRC accused the Rwandan Hutu rebels of the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, but they've denied any involvement and instead blame members of the Rwandan and Congolese army. Niger's ruling party candidate Mohamed Bazoum won presidential runoff elections last Sunday. He's the crown successor of outgoing president Mohamedou Issoufou, who is standing down after serving two terms. Bazoum picked up 55.75% of the vote in Sunday's runoff, and his opponent, former president Mahamein Ousmane, won 44.25%. It is with great emotion that I take in these results. It is also with great humility that I pay tribute to the people of Niger. But Usmane claimed that in fact he had won, as violent protests erupted the day the results were announced. Two people have died and hundreds have been arrested. Once Bazoum takes over, it will be the first democratic transfer of power in the country since independence from France in 1960.
And FIFA president Gianni Infantino launched a project to organise a school football championship in the Democratic Republic of Congo to be replicated at the African level. Infantino met the DRC's president Felix Tshisekedi in the capital Kinshasa as part of a tour around Africa. On a lancé... Uh, Today we launched a project here of a competition, a school championship that we're going to replicate throughout Africa because education, schools and football must work together. Stephen Odiambo is making his way to work dodging Nairobi's nightmare early morning traffic. Since the COVID-19 pandemic hit Kenya in March last year, the 30-year-old videographer has avoided public transport. He rather takes his chances with two wheels on the capital city's chaotic roads. The fear was there about trying to manage, maneuver these roads of ours where the matatus are usually, okay, the, the big percentage, the drivers are usually careless. They can push you off the road, they don't care about you. But I just said, I just look at the pros and cons. I'm much safer on a, on a bicycle, uh, I'm social distancing, uh, I take less time. 20 years after last getting on a bike, Stephen decided to start cycling to work. Along 15 kilometers of roads without bike paths, where he navigates trucks, rushing buses and motorcycles. Despite some cases of road rage and two minor accidents, he is a staunch convert. If I don't show you the benefit of why I'm cycling and why it's much safer and healthier for you, you won't see the benefit of it. Like for me, personally, personal story when I started in April until uh, December last year, 2020, I had lost 20 kgs in that span, just cycling, no gym, no running, no dieting. Like Stephen, more Nairobi residents have taken up cycling since the pandemic started. Bike sellers report a booming business. Jimmy says his sales went up by 58% in 2020. In 2020, the sales were high compared to 2019 in terms of sales, because you find that uh, people wanted to cycle more. Uh, just to keep fit, to commute from work from point A to point B. And uh, mostly since uh, cycling is a sport, they wanted to keep fit because people were on lockdown. Many people view cycling as equitable and low-cost mobility, though it can be a dangerous activity in cities like Nairobi. Kenya's National Transport Authority estimates up to 69 cyclists died in road accidents in the city in 2020. There are now calls for more facilities for cyclists. Weirdly, cycling, uh, the COVID has been good for cycling. It has shown uh, policymakers that people want to walk, people want to cycle. And they have to, whether they like it or not, they have to find a way of ensuring people can get to their destinations safe and sound. It's no longer us forcing ourselves to share roads with um, uh, mot uh, motorists. We do need a, a space uh, dedicated specifically for cyclists and for pedestrians. Nairobi has, however, begun a timid change. Authorities committed to allocate 20% of the road infrastructure budget to non-motorized transport in 2015. Today, bike lanes are being built in the business district. <laughs> 